All right, then. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 11. If you'd like to follow along, it's on page 596. Psalm 11. <clears throat> In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, fly away like a bird to the hilltop? For see how the wicked bend the, the bow, bow and fit their arrows to the string to shoot from ambush at the true of heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the inhabited world. His piercing eye weighs our worth. The Lord weighs the righteous as well as the wicked. But those who delight in violence, he abhors. Upon the wicked, he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulfur. A scorching wind shall be their lot. For the Lord is righteous, he delights in righteous deeds, and the just shall see his face. <clears throat> A reading from Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also shall be revealed with him in glory. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> From the Song of the Redeemed, O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. 
Amen. A reading from John. Pilate therefore said to Jesus, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Today we honor a group of people. Turns out there are quite a lot of them, but in particular there are five all of whom during World War II did something to um, save the Jews who were escaping from the Nazis. Some of these were diplomats, and in addition to finding them safe routes, safe places to stay, many of them were able to provide them with uh, official documentation that assisted them in getting away. The, the five people today who, who together are called the, uh, the righteous Gentiles and are honored in Jerusalem at uh, Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial, um, are representative of about 23,000 others who have been co considered to be involved in this effort. One, uh, Raoul Wallenberg, who was a Lutheran, was a Swedish humanitarian and diplomat. Hiram Bingham IV was an Episcopalian and an American diplomat. Carl Lutz was an evangelical, a Swiss diplomat in, diplomat in Budapest. Um, Shayun Sugihara was an Orthodox Christian and was serving as the Japanese consul in Lithuania. And Andre Trachme and his wife Magda, who were Reformed Christians in France. Now, I don't know a long uh, story of each of these people except for the last couple that I mentioned. Andre and Magda Trachme. And the reason I knew about them is that in my very last semester of seminary, I took a class that was called Good and Evil, uh, in which we examined what evil is, what good is, some of the philosophical backgrounds on all, all of that, but probably the most meaningful part was examples of people who embodied, uh, well, particularly good in the case of the trot maze. And um, one of the books we were required to read was um, a study by a professor. It was uh, called Lest Innocent Blood Be Shed, which was later made into a documentary film. And the purpose of this book 
was to examine how it is that goodness can happen, even in the midst of profound evil. And um, this pastor was in a little French mountain village in the southeast of France. And he and his wife inspired the 3,000 residents of that town, so not too much smaller than Galena, uh, to provide the shelter for more than 5,000 Jewish refugees during the war. The book has a subtitle called The Story of the Village of La Chambon and How Goodness Happened There. Uh, the village Le Chambon sur Lignon was in the mountains, not uh, maybe 40 kilometers from the city of Lyon. And over this four year period, while the Vichy French were cooperating with the Nazis and deporting Jews to concentration camps, these simple Protestant farmers performed great acts of courage. They boarded, they nourished, and they educated children of deported parents, accompanied families through a network of safe houses to get them out of France, and even became expert forgers. There were several stories that stood out from that town. Boy Scouts and Sunday school teachers silently fanning out through the village and its surroundings to warn the refugees to go into hiding. And they hid them so well that three weeks of searching failed to find them. The pastor's wife, Magda, served dinner to the police who came to arrest her husband and his two compatriots. Later, she was asked why she gave them food while they were taking her husband away to an internment camp and perhaps to his death. And her answer was, what are you talking about? It was dinner time. They were standing in my way and we were all hungry and the food was ready. Later, as Andre and the two men were walking to the town square with the police who had arrested them, the village people stood by, lavished them with gifts such a, that were pretty much unheard of in this time of war and rationing. They gave them candles and warm socks and chocolate biscuits, sausages, and even a roll of toilet paper. And then they showed their solidarity by singing, oh, mighty fortress is our God. Kind of ironic, I think, since that is a very well-known German hymn. They said that the sound became so loud, it was like an organ in a cathedral. It was so touching that even one of the arresting officers began to weep. There were teenagers too who challenged the Vichy officials who had come with buses to round up the Jews. The teens said to them, yes, there are Jews here, but we will not tell you which people are Jewish. You either have to take all of us or leave us alone. Well, there wasn't enough room in the buses for everyone, so the officials took the buses and they went away. So the author of the book wanted to know what it was about the people in Le Chambon that caused them to risk their village and their very lives to protect a stranger. How was it that this, what they called a kitchen struggle, a guerrilla action that began in the privacy of, of individual homes, why was it able to resist a great military power? The conclusion of the study was that it had nothing to do with a patriotic effort or a struggle to liberate their country or their village. Instead, it stemmed from a very deep conviction that human life is too precious to be taken for any reason. And a belief that it is better to help without harming or without destroying lives. And ultimately it was based on the biblical commandment, thou shalt not kill and embodied 
in the life and the death of Jesus. It seems that the actions of these villagers created its own momentum, a conspiracy, a conspiracy of goodness that rubbed off on others who observed it, including the Vichy commander and a German commandant who chose to look the other way. The most amazing thing is how the people, children and adults alike, rallied to help in very matter of fact ways. And they did not seem to understand that what they were doing was unusual or out of the ordinary. And later when they were asked why it was necessary to let refugees into the house, one woman said, well, look, who else would have taken care of them if we didn't? They needed our help and they needed it then. Another said, how can you call us good? Things had to be done, that's all. And we happened to be there to do them. You must understand it was the most natural thing in the world to help these people. It was simply what needed to be done, no matter what. These were ordinary people not unlike ordinary people everywhere. They were led and inspired by Andre Trachme, who lived deeply with and for others. He didn't just preach the commandment and leave it at that. He also acted to prevent others from doing harm and change lives in the process. He and his people lived out a motto that's engraved above the door of their small church. Aimez-vous les autres? Love one another. Amen. Let us express our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now on page 97, we will do the suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep the nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. 
and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us offer prayers for those who are upon our hearts today, for all of those who are on our prayer list, for our city, our country, and the world. We pray for all of those who are affected by COVID, whether it be by being ill, by losing their lives or the lives of ones that they love, or whether it's losing their livelihood, being unemployed or underemployed during this time. We pray for all of those who suffer discrimination and inequality. We ask to be given the kind of courage that the people of La Chambon and others in Europe had for saving the lives of strangers, for caring more for human dignity and life than for their own safety. Hear the prayers in our hearts. Hold all of those who are ill or awaiting diagnoses or undergoing treatment. We think especially of Karen Sirwich healing from her knee replacement and from Kathy Doig having had a successful procedure this week and for any others that you may be naming. We ask all of these things, O oh Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The general thanksgiving is found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May unmute, unmute yourselves and let us share the peace amongst one another. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. 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 Gloria, I have uh, two questions about next Wednesday. Okay. Will there be a reservation uh, opportunity sent out or perhaps not because we will not be at capacity if everybody comes? My intention is to do it anyway, just to practice and use you as guinea pigs once again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you were right. We will uh, not have capacity problems with this particular group, but um, I'm still playing around with three or four different ways of doing that registration. So none of them are 100% what I'm looking for. Okay. My second question is, I know all the prayer books have been, re have been removed because of our COVID restrictions. Should we bring our own prayer book? Thank you for asking that question. I, was, uh, I thought about that yesterday, but not this morning. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how, do people all have prayer books that they could bring? Yes. Yes, yes. sir. Because okay. we could do that. That would be easier. Alternatively, uh, we could create um, a bulletin. A one-time, I mean, you no. know, single use. Alex, well, that, I think one at a time. Alex, <laughs> I think we all have prayer books. Okay, so raise I, your hand if you have a prayer book. Here's the teacher. <laughs> Not <coming anywhere. laughs> okay, well, I'll put that in the reminder for the um, for the service itself then okay any other questions yes i have lots lots okay will it will it be a eucharist yes it will Excellent. it will be a little different though we we are only going to be able to use uh wafers for a time and no wine. There will be wine consecrated, so a, a teeny bit and a chalice is, um, would be useful. Uh, the worship group is going to meet tomorrow, and um, there may be some other things that will come up for Altar Guild after that, so we will make a list and uh, I think we'll do it okay. like we did today. Um, my intent for, uh, for the time being will be to distribute the communion the way we have done it with funerals and weddings where there are a large number of people, not at the communion rail, but at the, uh, the bottom of the chancel steps. And um, it'll be simple reducing touching and you know things like that so okay the um, hello the callbacks aren't here they're the lectors okay where do you want them how do you want them to go to the dance or 
to read from their seats? Um, I was thinking of the reading from the seats. Now, the only problem we might have there is how far we're stretched out. So the alternative for that is that I could bring the small lectern in here and they could step to the front to speak. So I'll be prepared for either of those possibilities. If we can get by with doing it from their seats, we will. Okay. Uh, it's, all, it's all a matter of people being able to hear, of course, so. Sure. So you will let Alter Guild know what kind of setup you want. Yes, it will be, um, I don't know if you saw how I was doing it in my dining room um, mm -hmm. on Sunday. It was very simple, just having the chalice. Uh, this time, I imagine we would have the ciborium with the wafers um, and the direction from the, the bishop is that there will be no one assisting the priest. The priest will set the table. So there's only one person at the table. And I, I will be bringing the uh, communion table from the chapel in so that everything... Oh, good. That's partially for the video stuff too, okay, so that everybody, whether they're here in person or whether they're at home, will be able to see well enough. Great. Okay, I'm good, thanks. Okay, thank you all. Are we ready to go turn off or uh, anything else? Yeah, I'm gonna hang I'm around. Good. Okay. Talk okay. About the schedule. Crystal, Charlotte, do you have a moment? Can I give you a call on the phone? Talk about the garden. Sure. Great. Absolutely. Okay. Bye, so, everybody. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.